Cheers, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to another special episode of Bourbon and Booze, because it's Thursday, Cinco de Mayo. Oh, you're special. See, I knew you were going to say something that's going to probably get us in trouble. What? I know you said very special, but still. All right, so it is Cinco de Mayo, and I racked my brains over what we should do for um, a whiskey day on Cinco de Mayo, and it just so happens that a really good friend of mine bought me for Christmas a Mexican whiskey. Are you with me? Mm-hmm. Contra de Mexico? <laughs> so we have a Mexican whiskey from my good friend Franco, who is our big tequila friend in our group. And this is Abasalo. Abasalo. <laughs> Who's responsible for this? <laughs> this is Abasalo. It's a Mexican whiskey. Um, made from a very special corn that has been um, cultivated. I think they call it maturation, but it's basically a 10,000 year old corn that has never been um, commercialized. And so there's, um, it's a special um, kind of bringing the kind of the parent plant to the, the child plant on and on, kind of like sourdough, I guess, mm -hmm. um, for 10,000 years. And it's only available, this corn is only available in uh, certain regions of Mexico. And if you look at pictures of it, it's a big squat fat corn that's white. And so they do basically the same kind of um, maturation, um, fermentation, stuff like that to make this whiskey. Uh, it's a little different process, um, but it's 100% corn. So it's going to be a very straight corn whiskey. It is proof at 43% uh, or 86 proof. No age statement. It's aged in new oak barrels and sometimes used oak barrels. And the cost is actually really reasonable. $40.99 here in the U.S. I don't know how much he bought this for because he got 49 this. 49 what? 40 99 He bought this in Mexico. I got my tax stamp and everything on it. Uh, it's legit, man. It's a legit. And you were trying to open it early, and I got mad at you because we never do uh, uncorking episodes. But I wanted to do that for this because it is Cinco de Mayo, which, by the way, is a holiday that's celebrated mainly here in Texas. Um, for the United States, basically. Well, yeah, it's not really a holiday in Mexico as much. It's more of a U.S. holiday. <clears throat> but it's to celebrate a major victory. But it's a minor holiday in Mexico and it's a major reason for college kids to get drunk. In. Okay. It's to celebrate a major victory of the Mexican army over the French back in 1863, I think, when the French tried to take over Mexico. I was gonna do it, but I didn't. And as Andy says, it's a major re uh, reason, holiday reason for him to drink. Not that he needs any reason. Every holiday, every day is a holiday for him. I haven't been in college since kindergarten, so. <laughs> so how did you celebrate the first Cinco de Mayo in 1863? I whoop the French's ass. <laughs> That's how I did it. <laughs> Great. All right. So right away you can tell how light this is. So it's going to be very light because of the corn. <clears throat> And it didn't have an age statement on no it? No age statement, so... So it's not in a barrel for that. I don't know what the rules are in Mexico. Here it's got to be at least two years, I think, to be and considered. Maybe they didn't even charge. Oh, wow. Char the barrels. No, it's going to be a charred barrel. Very sweet. Yeah, we've tried mellow corn and Platte Valley, which are 100% corn. And it's got a very similar, but it's got an odd aroma to it. So this is kind of like on Tuesday, we talked about Balconis being a whole new genre of itself. Uh, this definitely is a different genre, Mexican whiskey. I'm gonna have to try, there's several different brands. It's got a very strong, sweet, I would say corn kind of aroma to it. A little bit of vanilla. That's like put vanilla. It's got a little black pepper to it, just just a smidge. Okay. So 
some tobacco too. It's got something that I'm like trying to figure out. I can't, I can't put my finger on it or my nose on it. <laughs> Overall, it's unique. I mean, it reminds me of, like I say, Balconis was a very unique aroma, or the Italian whiskeys, the Poonies, very unique. So it's got a, a uniqueness to itself. It's so sweet. Yeah. On the aroma. I'm kind of getting like a candy that I know, but I can't put my... Okay. I'm going to tell you right away that... Oh, it's got some banana in it. Oh, okay, yeah. Definitely. Uh, this is not going to be a whiskey for everybody right away. They're going to have to probably give us some time. <clears throat> this is my first tasting, so I don't know if it's for me. But the aroma is very unique. Flavor. Mmm. Semi-sweet, cooling, some mintiness to it. Some vanilla. You're getting that banana in the... Yeah, banana. And kind of that corn flavor, like if you're eating fresh corn. I do like the flavor much more than the aroma. And like I say, I don't dislike the aroma. Uh... I'm thinking that the aroma is a basic three. It's not horrible. It's not really complex, but it's got some things in there that... I think it's like... Okay, I'm not going to say complex. It's just... Um, it's unique. Yeah, it's very unique. Flavor, I'm actually going to say it's a three and a half. I would go with that. I think it's got a really unique flavor. I like it. Uh, I do want to try it with some water. It's almost, I mean, it's just unique. This is very different than any other whiskey. So water takes away a little of the coolingness and kind of increases that banana, but it doesn't change anything on the flavor to me. And I'm wondering if they use just the corn that it's like it's very popular in like middle Mexico where they kind of let it get moldy and they eat it and it's like kind of weird. I'm, That's really weird to me, but yeah, I don't know. I've seen it on some of the shows and stuff and it is a big kernel and stuff mm -hmm. so it might be this is really interesting really good i'm glad that we're doing it for cinco de mayo because i do like tequila but i want to do something different so i think the water with the the afterwards it, it's very pleasant yeah. it makes it i would go back to our age-old question how do you drink this i'd probably drink this straight Maybe some ice, but I don't think I'd use it as a mixer. I think the flavor is so unique that it's you best just this way. I enjoy it the yeah. way it is. I would maybe try it with a... I'm really disappointed that Franco couldn't be here today, but I'm sure he's tried this. So we'll see. But tell us what you think. Have you tried a Mexican whiskey before? I know there's two or three out there. Almost all of them are available in the US. This was available in the US, at least in Texas even though this bottle came from Lower Mexico, I think, around so Mexico what's City. The verdict? Oh, three and a half. I would give it a three and a half. Yeah, three and a half, sorry. Uh, but tell us what you think, any other Mexican whiskeys we should try, or regional whis whiskeys outside the US. Um, we pretty much are hitting almost every continent right now, except for Australia, that's one that's that we That's what I was gonna it. say, I'd like to try some whiskeys from <clears throat> Down Under places that don't make maybe yeah. chili or so we've, we've tried or... we've tried uh asian taiwan um all of europe do they make whiskey in hawaii i think so 
I think so. We'll see. I'll be going there. So let's get some suggestions. <laughs> yeah, just leave suggestions. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe. It means a lot to us. Check out Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. And have a um, great Cinco de Mayo. Have some margaritas. Have some Mexican whiskey. Chip but salsa. But moderation is the key. Don't go over. That is every day except for Cinco de Mayo. No, he's right. Moderation. It's even in our tagline. So. Have a great holiday. Remember, there's no bad whiskey. There's only good whiskey and great whiskey. For our first Mexican whiskey, this is pretty great. Yeah. For whiskey in general, it's really good. Give it a try. I like it. Cheers. Laters. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Cheers, laters. Whatever.